hero of the stupid. Yes, I was Bill Clinton's lover for 12 years. And for the past two years, I have lied to the press about a relationship to protect him. Well, I'm sick of all of the deceit, and I'm sick of all of the lies. Did Governor Clinton use a condom? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to put this to a stop if there are any further questions that are degrading, in my opinion, like that. Now, right here, sir. It's a social issue, you know. Right here. Uh, was there ever a threesome? <laughs> Jennifer, uh, will you be sleeping with that? With, 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 right here. Uh, will you be sleeping with any other presidential candidates? Stuttering John. Stuttering John. Yeah, they call him. Tonight on Dr. Stern's Amazing Sexual Discoveries, learn how to make your member larger. Then Larry King interviews three sexy starlets, including the Kilbasa Queen. And TV star Tony Gatane gives three lucky guys a chance to win a dream date. Last week when we were taping, we were thrown out of the studio. I don't know if you saw our show last week, but at the end of the show, we didn't have a last segment because we were thrown out of the station. It's a shame we don't have that on tape. Yeah, it really, we wish we had that on tape. But I gotta say, our crew, they rushed out of here so fast. It was the first time I ever saw our crew move so Boy, fast. Oh, you guys fast! <laughs> right, I never saw anybody move so fast. It's unbelievable. Oh, wow. oh, it's so sunny in here. I gotta put my glasses on. And anyway, let me tell you that uh, last week there was some confusion. A lot of people said to me, we did Merv Griffin last week on the show. Mm -hmm. You know that. And lately, I don't know, I'm looking the same in every sketch. Were you Merv Griffin last week or Captain Kirk last week? I'm not sure. Was I Merv Griffin or Captain Kirk last week, Robin? I, I think it was Captain Kirk. The guy who does our makeup is Ralph. Ralph, come out here for a second. I want you to explain to me who I am and what's going on with the makeup. Where is it? You know, I like to play characters. I like to do this kind of thing. Come on out, Ralph. What's the matter with you? Uh, you look great. Take a look at this. Now, here's my last couple weeks. Ralph, you tell me who's who. Take a look at this. Uh, I'm playing three different characters. Take a look at your monitor. <laughs> number two is Jackie. Number two looks like Jackie, to tell you the truth. That's yeah. right. Uh, number three is... Uh... Look at that. Now, I'm supposed to play... Can you tell who these people are? Who is number, number one? Number three. Who is number one? Well, number listen, one? I, didn't want to do Sh I didn't want to do Shatner. He doesn't, have a, he doesn't have a face to make into a character. No, but you are a guy who makes up guys to look like people, and every one of my characters now look the same. Number one, I believe, was... Well, is that Ted Kennedy? Number one is Ted Kennedy. <laughs> no, no, no. That is William Shatner. I swear, I don't know who, who is number one. Come on, who is it? supposed to be William Shatner. I didn't want to do that because he, you... Eh, I wanted to do you a spot. Yeah, number one is... Um, I wanted to do you a spot. I'm telling you, I do not know who those people are. Number one is oh, who, come Ralph? Come on. I don't know who number one is. Who is that? What, did you lose your memory, too? No, who is that? Shatner. And who is number two, Kennedy? And number three is who? Was number two Kennedy? You were right. All right. Yeah. And, and who's number, number three, three is David Duke. Duke. Oh, David Duke. Come on, you know. I swear I didn't know. Yeah, yeah, Do yeah, me yeah. a favor, Ralph. Seriously, from now on, I'm, when I'm dressed up in character, I want to have name, <laughs> name tags, tags on each one. Here, give me one. I'll write a name, name on it right Hello, now. Hello, my name is. Here, give me All a right. pen. I'll Go ahead, leave. One. I'll write one for now. Yeah, you're real funny. Dick. Okay. <laughs> what talent he has? It's triplets. Thank triplets you. we had on. What is it? Merv was number Kennedy. It's Merv. You guys not even tell. Wait a second. Merv is number two. Merv is number two. He's not Kennedy. Didn't know. Oh, Ralph did the makeup. Oh, I know what it was. Merv, did, I couldn't even tell who Merv that was. Like That's very good. Shatner looked like fat. Ralph, what are you doing here? Get off the set. What? Get off the set. And it's attractive the way. You... Yeah, no, no one wants to see you. Shaves the sides of his head. Well, how could you expect him to do good makeup? Look at what he does to himself. That's the guy who does my makeup. <laughs> and he shaves the side of his head. Hey, Ralph, come here and show people the side of your head. I don't know if they got a good look at that. Let's just keep making him come yeah, back, and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Like a yo-yo. Look. Go ahead. Let's see. Look at that. What's wrong what is with it? that? 
What is, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with it? It shows a, the look of a confused man, a mental patient. That's what I it shows. decide whether to do it or not. Yes, okay. You know what it is? He was caught by an irate gardener. <laughs> oh, very good. All right. Let me introduce you to our spokesmodel now. Her name is Lisa Ann. Lisa Ann. Lisa Ann is her last name? I was backstage trying to get to know her, but she wasn't all that friendly, to tell you huh. the truth. Come, step right over here, Lisa Ann. Well, look at you. Aren't you attractive? And look at you. You're completely shaven, are you not? Yeah. Did you shave everything? You never know. Did you shave that thing, baby cakes? Did you? What? Did you? I do groom myself in that area. You know what? You have Ralph's... <laughs> you have the same haircut Ralph has. Right there. Right there. It's unbelievable. <laughs> he shaves his sides, too. Yes. <laughs> But anyway, what you're holding is Snapple. Everybody loves Snapple, Lisa Ann, and I know you do. How do we find you? Are you a big fan of the show? Pretty much so, yeah. Yeah, you watch it all the time. You said, hey, I could be a spokesmodel. Why don't I give it a try, right? Mm -hmm. And those are your own breasts. Those are not breast implants. No, they're not. I can always tell, Robin. Oh, really? You're fact, an expert. That's right. Next week on the show, we're going to play See If You Can Guess the Breast Implants. We've got three women and three contestants, mm -hmm. and we're going to see if we can find out which one has the breast implants. Okay. Believe it or not. Yes, okay? Now, um... Some you are a big fan. Mm-hmm. What's Robin's last name? <laughs> At least you knew where to look. Right. Well, that is Robin. You wouldn't have right. No, seriously, do you really know this show or not? Yeah, I you watch do? it. My mom tapes it, and I watch it there sometimes. And you don't know Robin's last name? Sorry, nights are tough. I can't believe you don't know Robin's last name. Are tough. Everything is tough. It is yeah. very tough. Weekend. To know. Well, you think if you were a fan, you would know, okay? What's your mom's last name? <laughs> All right, very good. Let me show these bottles. This is Snapple Diet. Have you ever tasted it? Take yes, a taste. Have. Take a taste this of this. Is, these See if are you like Snapple it. teas. These are real brewed, 100% real brewed. They're all natural. So when you have a family someday, you have children of your own, you'll know what to give them. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's very, very important to give your children and your family the natural best. Natural product. How old are you? 19. 19. You're almost a child yourself, aren't mm -hmm. you? It's too early to be talking <laughs> about children. But Snapple is great. It's all natural. See the look of pleasure on this woman's face when she's drinking it? That's the look of pleasure you're going to have. Hey, that's the look of pleasure you're going to have. <laughs> Everybody, Snapple is made from the best stuff on earth. You really love it. When we come back, there's a lot of excitement. Uh, you'll see what I mean. Don't go away. Amazing sexual discoveries with Dr. Stern. The show that brings you new advances in sexuality. In the past, we have shown you the stringless tampon, the money condom, the stereo bra, and digital panties. Now, amazing sexual discoveries. Hi, I'm Robin Quivers, and now the host on Amazing Sexual Discoveries, Dr. Howard Stern. Yeah! Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi. It's great to be here. <laughs> Isn't it great to be here, everybody? Yes. Why, how are you? Hey, we all love the look of full genitals, don't we? Doesn't everybody? Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't everybody yeah. look the love? Don't you love full genitals, everyone, Robin? Absolutely. Robin, when you're on a date, do you yes. love the look of full genitals? Yes. Well, then take a seat and okay. talk. Let's what do you have for us today, Doctor? Well, we all don't have a full package, do we? Oh. No, we don't. I know Jackie doesn't. <laughs> you know, guys, when your genitals aren't up to size, you feel bad. Yeah. You're embarrassed. When you're on a date, Robin, when you see a guy with a small weenie, yeah. but don't, like, like the size of... Like the size of this, don't you? Don't you laugh at a guy? You get... That's you right. Know, you're disappointed. Robin's favorite hors d'oeuvre. <laughs> you know, when you... That's for starters. When you're, when you're small, <laughs> you feel bad, and your date doesn't feel anything. Oh. What can we do about it? Yeah. Today... Is there something to do? Sure there is. Sure. Oh. Sure there is. Let's meet our guest on Amazing Sexual Discoveries, Dr. Ricardo Samatier, the hero of people. Yeah! Oh, hey, here's the guy who can help us. Doctor, have a seat. This is a real doctor, a medical doctor, Dr. Ricardo Samatier. And, uh, doctor, I'll tell you the truth, I feel bigger already. Just sitting in your presence, my penis feels larger. Dr. Samatier, you are the hero of penis. And you claim 
You can give a man a large penis by injecting fat into his private area, his most intimate of areas. Is that true? Is that claim true? That's correct. Is it true you have no black patients? No, you have <laughs> several black patients. Really? Now, do you find mostly white guys get this or black guys? Mostly uh, married men. Okay, how many patients have you done this on? 152. 152, have they all been satisfied? Everyone. Well, a little later on the program, we're gonna meet some people who had this operation. Yeah! Dr. Samatier, you really are a hero to a lot of people. Let's show a tape of the operation, Dr. Samatier. This is what happens when you have your penis enlarged. Robin, come on. Here's Dr. Samatier. He's dressed like the Star Trek. Oh. Now, the fat goes right in there, Dr. Samatier, right? Exactly. Below the skin of the penis, above the deep structures of the penis. Man. Wow. Isn't that great? Wow. Look at that, Robin. What are those words mean? Well, Antes and Despues? <laughs> means before and after. In before oh, and after in where Spain. Where did he do this operation? I think he does it. I think he does it in Spain. <laughs> I can't believe it. Now, can you show us on this weenie what happens? <laughs> now, seriously, Dr. Sam, I don't mean to make a joke out of this, because it is a serious operation. Go ahead. Now, let's say this is my size. Of course, Dr. Stern is much larger than this, Robin. Is that right? Oh, sure. Now, where would you inject? Well, in the penis, you have a loose skin that's a um, Doctor, surface. can you say penis a little louder? We're going for ratings tonight. <laughs> We're trying to beat all the other stations. So if you could just say penis again. On the penis, the skin is loose, and anybody can feel that. So you just lift the skin, put a tiny little incision in there, pass the needle underneath, and inject Ew. the fat as you withdraw. And then this goes to this. Wow! Is that pretty accurate? No, well, it's not that easy. No, no I can't believe it. And now you say the injection goes right there, right? Well, behind the head of the penis, yes. Wouldn't it, behind the head of the penis. Now, wouldn't it be easier to sew up your wife's private parts a little smaller no. than even to go through something like this? Do On the contrary, it's, it's much more painful for a woman, and it's much more surgery, and it uh, needs hospitalization. This is all done on an outpatient basis. Wow, it's amazing. So, and is there a lot of pain? No. Does it take just one operation? Yes. And that's it? And it stays that's permanent? It. So far, our first patient is 27 months after surgery, and he's satisfied. Yay! 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 Why are you dancing? I'm dancing because I'm trying to liven up the segment. All right, Dr. Samatier, you're saying you brought an actual patient with you. They've asked to be disguised. Yes. Okay, so we don't Why want... Why do they not want their identities known, Dr. Well, Stern? they do not want their identities known because... Because... <laughs> It's embarrassing. Am I picking my nose, Dr. Samatier? <laughs> it's an embarrassing subject, but... Uh... Now, this is a man and his wife? A man and his girlfriend. Well, a man and his girlfriend. Wow, this is going to be great. Oh, here they come. Here they are. All right, now we have their faces blanked out so that no one can see it. Here, come right this way, please. What? Oh, Just be no, careful, you just no. broke the bottle. What's the matter with you? What's the matter with you? Just come right in and sit down. Now, you two, you have you completely covered. Be careful. Here we go, Dr. Samatier's patients. Congratulations, you two. Look at that. Hey, doctor, you want to experiment on this little monkey right here? <laughs> what kind of disguise is on his face? Now, you two, we blanked out your faces because you don't want to be... Could you get out of here, you dope? What's the matter with you? Now, we have you obviously disguised so no one will recognize you. Now, sir, you seem like a conservative businessman. I guess so. And you were not happy with the size of your penis? No, I wasn't. Now, you actually had this operation. Did you have micro penis like me? No. You did not? No. And you were not satisfied sleeping with him? Did you see, were you missing something? No. Dr. Sabatia, how did you convince him to do it? Well, he saw a, a, a story done in the paper in Miami on me, and he kept, clipped out the article and came to see me. And you're totally satisfied? Very much so. And uh, how much bigger is your penis? About twice as big. So this is permanent. You haven't seen any shrinkage? No. Well, Isn't... that deserves a round of applause. Now, what operation do you think you'll have next? Hair? <laughs> are you, do you notice a difference when the two of you make love? Yeah. You do? And you are that much more satisfied? Yes. For years they have said that it doesn't matter what a man's size is, but evidently it does. Oh, men have been saying for years that a woman's breasts don't make a difference either, but do you think that? I absolutely agree with what you're saying. Beautiful.
Now, when you two are in the sack together, does he wear that mask? <laughs> because I gotta tell you something, that's frightening. I'm not getting right, Dr. Samatier? Can you do something for that? I can't believe it. It's unbelievable. Now, let me ask you this. You are dating one of the first penis enlargement patients, and you say you're satisfied. Will you marry him now as a result of this? Not as a result of this, no. I see. Now, how does he stack up to previous boyfriends now that he's had the operation? Well, he stacks up well. Really? <laughs> Did you have to buy him new underpants? Did you guys go shopping for new underpants after you had the operation? No. He, he buys his own stuff. He buys his own underpants. So well, what is the post-operative course like? Does he have to wear something on his... No, there's no need to wear anything strange. It's uh, You can use it as soon as you... No, you have to wait at least two weeks. Uh -huh. wow. Dr. Samatier, you are the hero of penis! The hero! <laughs> Unbelievable. So, you're saying your boyfriend, you're satisfied... Does he still fit everywhere, or is he too big for some places? <laughs> <laughs> He's too big for some places. <laughs> Let me tell you, Dr. Samatier, where can one get in touch with you if they want to have this operation done? I'm in Miami in the phone book. They can call me. Dr. Samatier is in the phone book. Let me take a break here on Dr. Stern's amazing sexual discoveries. Did I just spit on you? I'm very sorry. I, That's you know, like I, wearing the mask. I can't believe it. Now, you don't, uh, do you advertise in the penny saver? No? All right, listen. When we come back, we'll meet another doctor who says this stuff isn't good to do. But I'll tell you one thing, I'm signing up. Whoa. I don't care if it's good or bad. We'll be back with Dr. Stern's amazing discoveries right after this. And now, back to amazing sexual discoveries with your host, Dr. Stern. Yeah, Robin... Wait a minute. I, I, just had, I just had the operation during the commercial. Robin <laughs> fell in love with me, finally. <laughs> Here we are, back with more from Dr. Samatier, the man who gives us all hope. Yes, the man who claims he can inject fat into your penis and make it bigger. That's right. And that we is have, truly amazing. That truly is amazing. And I discovered Dr. Samatier, didn't I? That's right. I did. I really did discover him, Robin. <laughs> and Where I, was he? And was also, he lost? He was lost. I found him out in the parking lot. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I also found these two lovely people. This is a gentleman who actually had the operation, and this is his beautiful girlfriend. And now you're in love more so with your man, aren't you? In lust, anyway, yeah. You are absolutely in lust. When he came home and you saw it for the first time, were you amazed? Were wow, you... what a guy. <laughs> wow, what a guy. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. He's never been so happy. Yeah, well, who could tell with that mask on? <laughs> There are those in the medical community who disagree with this operation and think it's absurd. Yet Dr. Samatier says they're out of their minds. Let's meet E. Douglas Whitehead, M.D. He's here to tell us that this is not safe. E. Douglas, doctor, doctor. Good to see you. Hey, how much did I pay for my hairdo? I'll tell you one thing. Now, Dr. You... Stern, what kind of a doctor is E. Douglas? Quick, what kind of doctor is he? He's an E doctor. That's why he's E Douglas. Now, doctor, do we call you E or do we call you Dr. Douglas? Call me Dr. Douglas. Call you Dr. Douglas. I was hoping you'd say call me E, but okay. <laughs> Dr. Douglas, now, what kind of doctor are you? I'm a urologist with a special interest in male sexual problems. Now, you're what? against this kind of thing, aren't you? Absolutely. Now, why is that? Now, Dr. Cemetery to me is the hero of penis. We all want a bigger penis. I mean, I want a bigger penis. I mean, you must have run into other people who wanted a bigger penis. Yes. I would advise, it's a very common problem. It is. I would advise anybody in your audience who's watching the show who would consider this operation not to have it. Really? What? Now, why is that? After all, oh, we're just... sorry, Dr. Stern. Yeah, what are you doing there, Robert? <laughs> but we both have the same question. Why are we against this? This seems so simple. You take the fat out of the stomach and you put the fat into the penis. First of all, the operation doesn't work. Number two, what it's supposed to do for the man that thinks that his penis is too small, yes. most of those men do not have a penis that's too small. It's a matter of perception. Men don't go around looking at other men's penises like we know the size of a breast, a voluptuous breast, one that's less, and so on. A man generally doesn't know if his penis is too small or not. If he thinks it's too small, he should go to a physician, preferably a urologist, and invariably the penis is not too small. Dr. Samatier, what do you say about that? Well, I think that's very interesting. Uh, I think everyone should have their own decision of whether a penis is too small or not. But uh, I've already taught a board-certified urologist to do this procedure. He's already performed ten of them. 
in Miami also. I'll tell you one so. thing, you doctors sure get to see a lot of penises, I'll tell you that. <laughs> now, you say it does work, your penis has been thicker and bigger for how much longer now? About six months. Six months, doctor, how do you explain that? I would like to ask Dr. Sabatier, he said earlier on that he's the only physician doing this operation and he's done 152 and they're all successful. Mm -hmm. If it's such a good operation, why aren't other doctors doing the operation? And if the success rate is so good, it's virtually hard to believe because there's no operation that we know, mm -hmm. and as a physician, I think you should agree mm -hmm. that's 100% successful. So Dr. Samatier, it sounds like he's got you on the ropes. <laughs> that sounds like a tough question to answer. Well, first of all, after I did my first procedure 27 months ago, we waited 18 months to see the results of the procedure. After the patient reported to us that he had had no complications and the, that the procedure was successful in him, we decided to, to do a few more. So we asked for more volunteers in Miami. We did 12 more. So well, Dr. Fact, e, how can you say it doesn't work when this guy's sitting here saying it does? Well, Although the guy all, says it works, he's got a funny mask on, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I can't see his face. Right. I'd like to see his penis. Truthfully, if I could see his penis before and afterwards... Don't you guys think you should date two, first? <laughs> then, I could, then I could give you an objective opinion. If you got, Would exactly. you be willing to go back behind the curtain and show the other doctor his, <laughs> your penis? No. You would not? No. Oh, you wouldn't, oh, huh? Oh, oh, you see oh, that? Come on. Go ahead. Go ahead. You know what you're packing. Hey, Doc, by the way, what are you packing? Let me tell you something. I'm going right in for the operation. This is the problem. One doctor says have the operation. The other doctor says don't have the operation. Quite frankly, I'm confused. Dr. Stan, what do you do? What do you do? You sit home and, I don't know, change to another channel if you're getting that confused. Your head's going to explode from this discussion. Doctors... I'm not asking everyone to do it. I'm just saying let's keep an open mind. We're ready. I see. Okay, and uh, after, after all the patients are analyzed and, and the results are, are published, then everybody will, five years from now, I think that this will be the most commonly produced, uh, I mean, performed cosmetic surgery procedure in the United States. I want to thank all my guests tonight for coming. Personally, Dr. Stern says this, I don't let any doctor even pull my wisdom teeth. I stay home, something hurts me, I ignore it. I tend to do that, I admit it. But I want to thank both doctors. Both of you are respected men in your fields, and who knows where this controversy will end up. Wow. 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 Look at that. Wow. <laughs>
I don't think it's happened yet. Oh, it will. Wait till this sketch is over. <laughs> now, Denise Miller, you're the star of stage, and you're also known as the Kilbasi Queen. Yeah. What was, uh, what was uh, your highlight in your stage career? I think the highlight was when I swallowed my first hot dog. Wow. Look at that. Wow. Hubba hubba. Any of you getting hungry? You know, I won the Ace Award for this show. In fact, I've been sitting on my Ace the whole night. That's how I meet girls. I say, how do you like to kiss my Ace? Oh, Jesus. Sally. Did you ever get stage fright when you when you uh, did many of your movies, acting? Did you ever experience stage fright? Never. Interesting. Tony, what about you? Are you totally relaxed when you act or do you get a little bit nervous? Is the adrenaline still pumping? Uh, the, adrenal, uh, the adrenaline still pumps and yeah, I do get nervous every once in a while. Denise, what about you? Do you ever get nervous on stage? Yes, I got nervous the first time that I ever had to swallow four hot dogs. Four hot dogs. That's almost impossible, honey. Larry's falling in love. Would you like to see it? Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> honey, you must be great at barbecue. <laughs> Let's see. I know, Sally, it's a far cry from working with Bob Dylan. I'll tell you that. Mm. Let me tell you something. Sally, what special thrill do you get from performing, honestly? Um, I guess, uh, I guess it's like making love to the world, you know? You get to be, you get to have everyone see your heart, your soul, and all your emotions and everything, you know? Wow. I mean, that wasn't meant to be funny, that was meant to be serious. Let me tell you something, we needed a break after the four hot dogs, it was good to be serious. Tony, what special thrill do you get from performing? When you're on TV, does it give you that, that high that I get? Not really. Do you get a high from it? Uh, you mean watching myself on TV or actually doing it, the performing? Either one. Yes. Really? Yes. I love her. <laughs> Kibasa Queen. <laughs> you ain't seen nothing yet. Six. Let's see six. Kibasa Queen, what special thrill do you get from performing? Um, I guess the biggest thrill I get is when I do the uh, 12 inch kielbasa. Oh, oh, you're, saying, you're saying you get a thrill when you swallow a 12 inch kielbasa. <laughs> <laughs> and see this. Wow. Tony, take notes. I'm real. I'm trying. <laughs> How come you didn't have Hurst in here? <laughs> I gotta tell you, Father Don just had an accident. Larry will be back in a moment. All of you are super talented ladies. <laughs> Let's take a look at some of your work. First, Tawny's oh. up. Tawny, this is exciting. Oh. You are the new star of WKRP in Cincinnati, and I'd like to take a look at your tape. Do you know what I love most about you? I know it's hard to pick just one. <laughs> it's your luck, Herb. You have such large luck. <laughs> I know. Ready for... Heaven? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. You're beautiful. Oh, thanks, You are Larry. so blessed. I can't uh, believe it. Oh. Now, Sally, your turn. A clip from your new movie, In the Heat of Passion.
love a salad. <laughs> wow. Oh. Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh. Kabasa Queen, you've worked in film as well. Let's take a look at your clip. Do we need a set up here, Kabasa Queen? No, you can just roll it. What was that, honey? Your throat you clogged up? On. What? <laughs> what? You can just put it on. All right, let's see. Here's a clip of Kilbasa Queen's work. Oh, Betty does not The picture's laughs anyway. Three very feisty tomatoes. And let's take a few phone calls from the ladies. This will be fun. Hi. John from Vatican City. Go ahead. Uh, yes. I wish to ask Kilbasa Queen a question. Go ahead. Uh, will you be appearing in Vatican City anytime soon? Because you are very black. Kilbasa Queen, will you be appearing in Vatican City anytime soon? Not unless he sends me tickets to get there. I see. Anything else? No, that's fine. Thank you. All right. That's not what it said on my script. Ah. <laughs> okay, let's take another call. Let's hope there are some questions for Sally or Tawny instead of the Kobasa Queen. Magic from Los Angeles. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, hello. Yes. <laughs> yeah, will, will, uh, will you be appearing in a film soon? All right, who is that question directed to? Uh, Tawny to or Sally? To the Queen. To who? To the Kielbasa Queen. Well, why is no one calling in about Sally Kirkland? She appeared in the movie JFK. Oh, come on, this is ridiculous. Willie of Palm Beach, go ahead. Uh -huh. Yes, uh, I have a question about JFK. Good, finally a question for Sally Kirkland. Go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, Kielbasa Queen, yes. would you go see the movie JFK with me Friday night? <laughs> All right. <laughs> well... <laughs> Tony and Sally, I'm sorry. Everyone seems to be intrigued with the Kovasa Queen. No, I, I'm sure Sally and I both understand why. Hey, what time is it? Isn't it time for me to be divorcing somebody? Well, I see we've run out of time. Sally, you're so talented. So are you, Larry. Uh, have you ever considered working behind the camera? Yes, I just produced four films, and I'm about to direct one in the next year. Good, because here's a camera. Take a picture of me and that Kovasa Queen, for God's sakes. It's unbelievable. Please, just a quick, quick picture. Here we go. Thank you. Do something. Yeah, just this is fine. Where's the prop? Wow. There? The prop, the prop. Go ahead, Sally. Showbiz, do it. That's it. <laughs> I have a question. Yeah. Hey, let me take off this makeup. Yeah, really? Let me I talk to you for a second. Let me just talk to you for a second, ladies. Yeah. I want to talk to you for real. You guys are great. I swear to God, you guys are... <laughs> you know, Sally, Tawny. Well, Sally, what's your marital status? Uh, well, I'm living with someone six months now. You got a guy? Yeah. Now, Tawny, you were with David Coverdale, the guy from White Snake. You were married to him. You told me that on your radio show, on the radio show, right. but you guys divorced. Right. And I felt bad for you. You did. I really did. Oh no. Hey, how do I look? Here. Wait, no, it's gonna hurt, Sally. No, Sit down in your chair. chair. Why do we have a? No, I don't trust you. No. It's unbelievable. It really hurts. Wait a second. Ah, there it is. Ah. All right. There is how. Hey, how do I look now? Better, better, all the time. Now, Sally, you're not living with Bob Dylan, are you? No, he's my friend. Now, listen, let me ask you a question, okay. Tony. Yeah. You have, uh, you broke up with your husband. Mm -hmm. So you are completely single, right? Yes. You have no man in your life. Um, I, uh, uh, seriously speaking, no. Now, I know Sally has a man, and I know Kielbasa Queen has several men. Is that right, Kielbasa Queen? Well, <laughs> oh, I should yes. hope so. But, Tony, yes. I have arranged for, for something for you. I have gotten three of New York's most eligible bachelors, <laughs> the wealthiest, good-looking men, to play dating game with you. Great. Would you love to do it? I'd love yeah. to do it. When we come back, Tawny will get to choose from three of the most outrageous bachelors in the United States of America, and maybe one of them will win Tawny's heart right after these words. <laughs> Look what I've done for you. 
Because you're single and you're every guy's fantasy, I've arranged for three very eligible bachelors to play the dating game. There's bachelor number one, mm -hmm. bachelor number two, and bachelor number three. Bachelors, you're all over there, right? Yes. 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 And you all love Tawny, right? Yes. yes. All right. Now let's get into it. Let's go to bachelor number one, Tawny. If you feel like jumping in, you go ahead, okay? Uh, okay. Bachelor number one, I would like you to sing a love song to Tawny. Uh, yeah. I, I would like to sing You Light Up My Love. You light up my life. You give me hope to carry on. You light up my day and fill my night with song. It can't be wrong when you feel so right. Cause you, you like my life. Well, Tony, I see you're keeping track. Let's go to bachelor number two, all right? I'll tell you one thing, I'll give you a hint. That's not Julius LaRosa. <laughs> bachelor number two, what would you like to sing? I would like to sing... Love me tender. Now you sound like you're very nervous because are you you are a big fan of Tony's. Oh yes, I am. All right, sing your song to Tony, a love song, and make it passionate. And short. And short. Thank you. Love me tender. Love me true. Is it over yet? All right, very good. Let's move ahead to bachelor number three. Tony, are you impressed yet? Uh, so far. Okay. <laughs> bachelor number three, what do you, uh, go ahead, sing his love song, go ahead. I would like to sing the, follow the yellow brick road. Follow the yellow brick road, go ahead. Follow the yellow brick road, follow the yellow brick road. All right, maybe we should try follow, something else. Follow, 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 follow the yellow brick road. Tony, this is New York's best. I'm telling you, you're gonna have a man by the end of the night. This is just an attempt for me to look good in Tawny's eyes. <laughs> Suddenly, I'm attractive. All right, now, why don't, what, bachelor number one, why don't you do the Tarzan yell for okay. Tawny? Tawny, you're, that, that I will... I like that. All right, go All ahead. All right. <laughs> All right, very good. You're an impressive guy. That's why you haven't gotten laid in 15 years. Number two, go ahead. And number three. Tony, that is sex unleashed, is it not? Yes, it is, Are Howard. you starting to form an opinion? Oh, yes, I am. Oh, yes. Is that a bad opinion about me? I hope not. Listen, <laughs> let's ask the guys a tough question. If you were a millionaire, what would you do with the money? Number uh, one? I would like to have the money delivered to you on your door, dear. <laughs> Wow, is that romantic? What did he say? What did he say? Wow. Your man is choked up with emotion. He'd like to have the money delivered to your door, dear. I think. Tony, let me ask you something. Uh, are you getting a, a sexual feeling about any of these guys? Like I'm getting a vibe. Like you'd want to spend the rest of your life oh, with one of them? Oh, definitely. All right, if you got Tony pregnant, bachelor number one. Yeah, I like this. What would you tell your mother? I don't care if I damn what my mother thinks. I would be so proud to be the father of Tony's baby. Right. He would be my son. You would be very proud to be the father of yes, Tony's baby. Yes, definitely. Yes. All right, bachelor number two, if you got Tony pregnant, what would you tell your mother? Uh, it, it would be hard to, t t to tell my m m mother. It would be hard to tell your mother why? Because of your stutter? No, because she's d d dead and I can't dead. dig her up. You're not going to dig her up? No. All right. That was a good answer, Tony. Don't worry, Tony. I'll let you ask some questions. No, Howard, you're doing just I'm doing okay. fine. I'm doing all right. You're hitting all the points that really mean something to me. All right, okay? good. All right. all right. We've gotten into all love right. and money and all these issues in pregnancy. Bachelor number three, if Tony got pregnant, what would you tell your mother? I would tell my mother because she would get mad and cast a spell on Tony. My mother get mad at me? Once and turn me into a midget. <laughs> All right. All right, guys, real quick because we're running out of time. How would you like to uh, dress Tony for your date? Bachelor number one. Like a slut. <laughs> you would like to dress. You would like to dress Tony like a slut? Yes. All right, bachelor number two. How like would you like to dress Tawny for the date? Like a 
Flutz. All right. <laughs> Bachelor number three, how would you like to dress Tawny for your big dream date? I'm a butt man. You're a butt man? Anything that would accentuate her derriere. Anything that would accentuate her derriere? Yes, sir. Well, that's being very honest, all right? And uh, please describe your date with Tawny, uh, bachelor number three. Diner. Diner? A movie. A movie? A possibly some rough sex. <laughs> rough sex. Rough sex. Tawny, yes, those Harry. are your choices, and I am running out of time. You are probably the most beautiful actress I can think of. Your video. Do you have anything you want to ask the guys before you make your big decision? Oh boy, and, and it's a, and a, what a big decision it is. Do you, you want know? to call your publicist out here? Maybe she wants to pull you right off the show right now. <laughs> yes, I think she does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Would you Would you like a razor blade at this point? <laughs> you could always opt for me, Tony. My wife wouldn't mind. Go ahead, Tony. Who's so it going to be? Do I get to pick? Yeah, you got to pick from number one, two, or three. You tell me why you picked. I have it already written down. Go ahead. And I need a close-up on this. All right, go ahead. Howard. Wow. Isn't that a great ending? Hey, Tony. Wow. Tony's my the name. Priest? It's unbelievable. Why did you come out and meet these guys? Uh, bachelor number one, come out and meet Fred the Elephant Boy, Tony. Hi. Very attractive man. Hi. <laughs> Get out of here, you animal. Just shake her hand. How dare you? He almost raped her. Bachelor number two, Quentin the Stutterer, right here for you, Tawny. Hi, nice hi. Nice ah, very you. nice. And of course, here's Kessler. Kessler, come on out and meet Tawny. Give her a big hug. That's hi. it. Very nice. Uh, very good, Kessler. Oh. Well, that's it for our show. We got to go right now. Thanks for playing the dating game. The great Tawny Katane, WKRP in Cincinnati. They love it. Tell me I look better without my glasses, but I'll tell you something, I'm blind as a bat. I can't see a friggin' thing. There you are. Oh, okay. How are we doing? All right, look who's here. Stupid man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you remember the superhero, hero stupid man? The stupid. Hero of the stupid. That is correct. All right, very you, you, good. You, you shouldn't mislead everybody that I'm stupid. Yeah. No, you're not stupid. A lot of people who stutter sometimes you think they're stupid. Isn't that you're right? Very intelligent, you yeah, tell yeah. me. Yeah. That's right, yeah. Well, anyway, Stuttering John <laughs> went out and he interviewed James Brown. Did James Brown like you? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. You can't tell. You can't really tell. All right. James! Hey, James, can I ask you a question for the Howard Stern Show, James? Uh, can I ask you a question for, for, for the Howard Stern Show? This is tape for broadcast. Um, did you ever bang your testicles on the floor when you did a split? Did I? Uh, I don't know. I'll check and see. James. Hey, uh, James. James. Now, what now, wait a second. What's going on now? James is sitting down? James is sitting down, you know. Uh, and James did not want to give you an exclusive interview? No, so I had to scream. Across, like, 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 they put us behind that partition there. Because it looks like he's there shopping. It doesn't really look what like... What is that? What, what is, is that, that place? Well, that's, that's the Tower Records. Yeah? And they, and they wouldn't let us go up to him, so I had to, you know... Well, why? They felt that... It doesn't look like there's that many... other people going up to him? It doesn't look like there's that many not people Not any press. There. Just people who, who, like, wanted his... His record signed. I see. Now, so John went over, and, and they made you stand far away from yes. James Brown. Okay, I get the picture. So he's yelling. He's yelling okay. his questions out. <laughs> that little dwarf prince, did he rip you off? Uh, I don't know. That's my turn. He's somewhere around here. Are you, are you angry that all those lame rappers like MC Hammers steal your riffs? I love you guys. I do what you have to do. Yeah, but it's your stuff, James. Why are you ignoring Howard Stern, James? Do you know Howard Stern, James? It's been a long time ago. Why are you ignoring Howard Stern? Am I ignoring him? Why are you? He's been trying to contact you for a while. Really? Yeah, he's a big fan. No man never changed. Never changed. Were you singing Wait a minute. while the police? <laughs> what well did James Brown say? What do I? I'm the white man. How would I know what James Brown is saying? <laughs> I don't understand John. I don't understand James. You're supposed to be able to interpret that stuff for me, Robin. <laughs> Well, here we go. I think what he was saying is, don't drive with me, is what he was saying. <laughs> Didn't the cops have to shoot out his tires? Yeah. yeah. Just stop it. All right. <laughs> while, the police, while the police were chasing you? Was I singing to you? I was about a friend. <laughs> what was that question? Wait, I want to hear that again. Wait. Uh, were you, really? Yeah, he's a big fan. No man never changed. He's never changed. Were you singing while the police, uh, while the police were chasing you? Was I singing? Yeah. I was proud of Frank. <laughs> so who's this, who's this guy standing right in front of you? The, the white guy. 
Uh, it's probably his, his uh, probably 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 his press guy. Probably his press yeah. guy. Well, that's a tough sentence to say. Probably his press guy. You know. A lot of peas. A lot, a lot of peas in that sentence. Probably his press guy. <laughs> Love to know when the camera's going to come back to me. There it is. Okay. <laughs> I say there's a lot of peas in there. Uh, it's probably hard to say, probably his press guy. That would be a tongue twister, wouldn't it? Very good. All right, listen, we got to go. We're out of time, everybody. We'll see you next time. Today at 3, a teenage gang never looked so good with members like Patrick Swayze, Tom Cruise, Matt Dillon, Emilio Estevez, and Rob Lowe, all in Francis Ford Coppola's The Outsiders, right here on LA's very independent Channel 13.